Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. In this video, I'm going to be going through question number four from the Elmwood K P3 collection. Actually, C3 collection. Now C3 has become P3. And it's also question number six from my end of topic worksheet number three, um, which is about trig functions, uh, reciprocal trig functions. And for this question for part A, is prove that cosec theta minus sine theta is greater than or equal to zero for all theta in the range of theta between zero and pi. Okay, so it's another proof type of question. So we've got to take this expression and show that it's always going to be zero or greater than zero. All right, okay, that never be negative basically. So let's take this expression and let's rewrite it in a form that we're used to. So I'm going to write it as one over sine theta cosec theta is the reciprocal of sine theta so 1 over sine theta minus sine theta i'm going to rewrite this so it's more kind of easy for us to show so i'm going to make this into one fraction so this is 1 over sine theta minus if i make this over sine theta i have to multiply the top by sine theta so i'm going to get sine squared theta so you have 1 minus sine squared theta over the same denominator of sine theta so you have 1 minus sine squared theta over sine theta. Okay, so now we know that 1 minus sine squared theta is the same as cosine squared theta. Because we know the identity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So therefore, 1 minus sine squared theta is the same as cosine squared theta. So I can write this as cosine squared theta over sine theta. Now, for me, that's enough. Okay, because... I know that cosine squared theta is like saying cosine theta all squared. That's what it means. And I know that this is always greater than or equal to zero. Okay, for all for all theta, all values of theta. Because whether it becomes whenever the value of cosine theta becomes negative, it's going to be squared. The lowest it can become is zero when, when cosine theta, in this range is when cosine, th when theta is pi over two, it's going to become zero. So it will be equal to zero at that point, which is true. So cosine theta squared will always be greater than or equal to zero. And we can say that sine theta, sine theta is always greater than zero, okay, in the range, okay, or for the range of theta between zero and pi. Okay, it will never even equal zero because the sine curve between zero and pi, it's always positive. It reaches zero at, at zero degrees and zero at pi degrees, but here it's, uh, the theta is greater than pi. If the theta is greater than zero and less than pi. So therefore, we can say that this is always positive, um, always greater than zero, and this is always, the lowest this can be in zero. So therefore, we can say that cosine squared theta over sine theta must always be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, because you're dividing a positive by a positive. The worst you're doing is dividing zero by something which is uh, positive. So you always get something which is either zero or greater than zero. Okay, so that's proved. That's basically pr proved it. So cosine squared theta over sine squared over sine theta is always greater than or equal to zero. And we've given the reasons for it. Therefore, we can say uh, cosec theta minus sine theta is greater than or equal to zero for all theta between 0 and pi. Okay, so that's uh, how we can show that as a proof. That's for part A. Now for part B, it says find the values of x when x is between 0 and 360 degrees, which satisfy the equation 6 squared x minus 4 tan x plus 2 equals 0. Okay, so here we have to express these as the same trig function. Now, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1 is our main identity. From that, we can derive all the other identities that we need. I want one which has something to do with sex squared theta, because I sex squared x, because I want to express these all with the same trig ratio. Then I can treat it like a quadratic equation and solve it. So I know that I can express sex squared x in terms of tan x. And if I forgot how or what the exact identity was, you can always refer back to this. I don't know, sec x is the reciprocal of cosine x. So if I divide 1 by cosine squared x in this, I'm going to get sec squared x. 
but then I have to divide everything else by cosine squared x as well. So this is going to give me a plus 1, and this is going to give me tan x, tan squared theta. Okay, so tan squared theta plus 1 equals sex squared theta. So I can use that identity here to replace sex squared x with sex squared x with 1, or tan squared x plus 1. Tan squared x plus 1 minus 4 tan x plus 2 equals 0. Um, now I can basically uh, rearrange this to make it as tan squared x minus 4 tan x plus 3 equals 0. And this I can treat as a quadratic equation because I've got something squared minus 4 times that same thing plus 3. So to make life easier, a lot of students like to do this. For example, let y equals um, tan x. So this will be y squared minus 4y plus 3 equals 0. I think this factorizes quite easily into y minus 3 times y minus 1. Yep, that's right, equals 0. So we know that y equals 3 and y equals 1 are solutions to this. So we can say now that the tan, the tangent of x equals 3 and the tangent of x equals 1 are solutions. We want to find the solutions in degrees between 0 and 360, not including 0. So we can say that x is equal to inverse tan of 3, and x is equal to the inverse tan of 1. Well, I know that the inverse tan of 1, the first angle, the primary angle, is going to be 45, 45 degrees, and the other angle in this range between 0 and 360 for tan, you just keep adding 180s, so that's going to be 225 degrees, 180 plus 45. Um, if you add another, 40, another 180, it will be out of the range. And for, for this, I'll use my calculator to find what the principal angle is. Where's my calculator going? Hold on, let me find it. Okay, here it is. Now, I need to be in degree mode. I'm in radian mode, so I'm going to go to degree mode first. So that's degrees now. So I say inverse tan of 3, which gives me 71.565. That's 71.565. Again, to find the next angle, I'm going to add to this 180. That's going to give me 251.565. 251.565. Now, did they tell us how they wanted to round it? They didn't tell us how to round it, so therefore, we should give the angles to one decimal place. So it's 71.6 and 251.6 degrees. And so here we have the solutions. There's two from this part. And there's two from that part. So those are all the solutions within our range. Remember with tan, the principal solution, you add 180 to it to get the other angles. And you keep uh, subtract 180s from it. So the multiples of 180 um, you know, above it and multiples of 180 below it will give you all the values that share the same tan ratio. So we did we got all the angles in our range, which is between 0 and 360. And we got the answers for this question. And that's the end of question number um nine from the Elmwood collection, no, number four from the Elmwood collection, and number six from my end of topic worksheet. Other questions, um, if I do other questions from the Elmwood papers, um, I'll have a playlist for it. Um, I might put the playlist here and see if, it, if I can occupy it as I go along. So I'll put a playlist here for the Elmwood K papers, and I'll put a playlist over here for the uh, topic of trig functions from uh, chapter three of um, P3, and I will put some P3 paper or material on the card on the top, and you can subscribe to my channel from the um, icon that will appear over there. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.